here we are in round three winning the die roll so let's see what we have one land and a ponder the ritual that could have been a land and well just a hand that isn't too great if we manage to ponder into lands it's fine but we have to kind of waste our fetch land for it and what we are getting isn't very good at controlling the board so I think that's too risky of a keep. If we don't hit lands with the ponder, we can basically concede, so we have to go down. And that's that isn't much better, but we have a chance to kind of get the upheaval going. And we have snuff out as a free spell, so there's a potential of going ponder into blue, well, swamp into blue land into monolith and then do something with upheaval, maybe play the taskmaster, but even that isn't really a winning play. The question is if we are better off going down to 5. If we draw a blue source, we could also tutor for preordain. Doesn't seem doesn't seem very good. I think it's another mulligan. Uh, we're just going to keep this. Of course it isn't the greatest on the play, but there well, you, you can't expect much from your five card hands and having three lands is actually quite nice. So in this case we found a Nicole Bolas and that has to be the right choice there. If we manage to stay alive long enough to get this into play, we should be fine. Of course that's kind of a dangerous card. We might want to copy it with the Metamorph. Oh, we're doing we're doing quite nicely here. As I said, one of the better mulligans to mulligans to five, and let's get rid of this. Now the engine is nice and all, but I want to survive, and this might not even be an aggressive deck. So I think I keep the swamp because of mana reasons. But not too exciting of a preordain. I don't know what we were looking for actually. Not much to not much to find in this spot. Oh, he looks kind of aggressive now. Didn't expect that. So we are still missing a second black, which means that the bane could be be kind of awkward. This could be a 3-1 first strike or this, but Bane of the Living has to be the better play. Let's just let's just hope for a swamp. Okay, he's playing three colors as well. Now I, I I'm actually hoping that he levels up the cryptologist so that we get some more time and it would also make my shell dog much better he's probably aware of that though level up once he levels it up again, then he can start drawing multiple cards. Repeal? That's not nice. If that's all he does, it's perfectly fine, of course. Spell Skite. Okay. Don't think that's... that's That doesn't make much sense. I mean, either you are aggressive or not, but... Playing three ones and all fours is kind of a bad combination, I think. Now, Watery Grave sounds like the card we want to activate this. And I'm also going to show him the grave. There's really no, not much reason not to. Now, an alternative play we might want in the future is to copy the spell skite with the metamorph would have been a fine play as well because we wouldn't have 
taken three here and would have been able to prevent any kind of tricks. Well, kind of. To having two spell skies in play is actually kind of uh, difficult. So, Bane of the Living is just going to give both of these minus one minus one and then we can still play Cold Steel Heart. So I'm going to see if that works. And Bane of the Living can actually attack into Spell's Kite right now, so let's do that and drop the heart. Probably choose, well, we don't need another blue, we don't need another black. Could actually choose red or white. Now let's see, if, if we have the Reaver in hand, so that's what we want to be casting. If he destroys the plateau, then it's not a big deal that we don't have a red anymore, but we need the white, so I think we should choose that. This is basically what I was talking about. If you are going to include aggressive cards, then you need an aggressive strategy. So, I mean, it's it's fine to have it as a defensive card, and of course you are going to attack with it if your opponent doesn't do anything that needs the Legionnaire on defense, but it it's kind of a sign of a deck that could have been a little more streamlined. Especially if you have cards like Spell's Guide, then you aren't... then Well, early aggression isn't your biggest concern. Okay, it looks like he's just doing whatever he whatever he wants. Playing Good, good stuff, band. Basically, band, band mid range, I guess. And we drew a land. I think we just go for the Reaver here. We could back it up first, but I don't like to give him more time than needed. He's also not in, in any kind of colors where I expect to face that much removal. I think it's quite likely that he has a counter spell of some sort. But that means that we have to actually play the Reaver earlier than later. And if he if he bounces it, for example, then we just play it again. And we didn't waste a turn casting the Metamorph first. Of course I can only do that because I also have this as a backup plan. And also this is going to copy his best the best card he plays. Which I would have um which I wouldn't have if I copied the spells guide instead. In a certain way, I hope he draws some more cards. Of course, I don't want him to draw too many cards, but uh, the sooner Nico Bolas hits play, the better. So he's bouncing this, drawing a card. I uh, guess that's fine. I've seen uh, worse cryptic commands, so not too unhappy about that. I think we can just resolve it again. And then if he doesn't handle it, we might even want to copy it, it for to draw like four cards. But I think if we connect once with this, drawing two and, and dealing six to him, we are probably winning. It's also interesting if he decides to trade these two. I'm offering the trade any time, so he might want to wait with it, but he could also attack. I'm not scared of of any kind of edict effects. And even if I even if he was playing black, I think it's still much more relevant to have um, 
well, to protect my life total. And once again, we have the choice if you want to waste a turn or spend a turn to protect the Reaver or not. And I'm just going to run it out again. I, as, as last time, I don't see a reason to protect him from anything. Okay, that was a force of will. I f6, but here it is. He had to get rid of Phantasmal Image to do it. So I think that was a quite the fair exchange. And it's also funny that he wasn't able to hard cast Force of Will. So I think we can't complain about that. Now, Mystical Tutor is, of course, insane if you want to get upheaval. So I think with the tutor in hand I can just copy the spell guide or even the cold steel heart to have a better upheaval but I also want Nicol Bola so I think spell guide is the best to protect protect Nicol Bolas and if if things go wrong I can still get upheaval and then drop Sheldok L again and that's just going to be so good because I basically get an insane card on turn two. And we even get some counter counter backup as well. That's a nice card. Whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two cards. So I know that I want to get Nicol Bolas into play, but then he can change the target to a spell skite anyway. So I think that's a nice uh, Riemann target right there. I mean, we still have the chance to upheaval if we want to, but I don't think we are doing it right now. So... He has just the Consecrated Sphinx, and he can drop it, and then we then <laughs> then we then we draw. Then he draws two, but we get the Consecrated Sphinx. So it actually is the best hideaway ever, as I suppose. Karn would have been nice as well. And of course, we do have double spell guide as backup. Not going to get the upheaval yet, I don't think I want to show him. And I don't have anything to transmute. Well I could could just use it for the shuffle effect, but I just want the land, so I think this should win the game. This this setup looks almost unbeatable. I could get a memory lapse at some point with the tutor just to have another counter spell. If he has a Wrath of God, then I need to rely on Nicol Bolas, but then I can still upheaval and drop something large and the Sherlock Isle. Titan. That's actually quite nice, yes. 
So he's going to try to tap Consecrated Sphinx. And we are going to let him tap a spell skite instead. I don't think he's getting out of this, and every turn that goes by gives us more information, so destroy target artifact or enchantment, so that's also spell skite fodder. Now, I think I'm just going to a mystical here. I don't need the upheaval, but I can snuff out the frost titan and then mesmeric fiend his hand. So I think that should that should win the game in the shortest shortest way possible. I would probably concede, but I don't know what, what he, his plans are, so... It's still possible that he has a way to bounce this, for example, which would be a nice, nice out, but even then he's fighting against Nicole Bolas. Wow, he has an Oblivion Ring, doesn't use it. He has only three white sources, so I suppose I start start killing those. Oh, okay, he didn't cast the Oblivion Ring because I had the Spell Skite, so that makes a lot of sense. And boom. I also know that he doesn't have upheaval because we have it, so <laughs> he just draws a celestial bird. That's nice, even getting around the spell sky this time. So yeah, it's gone. I think we just run everything out there. We are drawing so many cards. Okay, <laughs> yes seen enough finally. The Tasmas is really aw awkward. Really just a bad card I think. So let's see, he has some mana fixing but no good lands. Masticor could be nice. Platinum Angel probably too weak. Wrench Mind could be could be good against him. So let's see. I once again don't like the Tasmas, although it trades with his uh Rock Swarmonk, but he probably he, he should probably board out the the war monk. He has a lot of removal spells: seal of primordium, oblivion ring, celestial purge, 
then some creatures. So I think the matchup should actually be quite nice. I'm going to take this out. This is kind of um, unfortunate that he has at least two solutions to to the Planeswalker, but it's still an, an insane card. Never going to take it out. So this might be the matchup where we want Future Side. If the game goes longer, Future Side just wins. But I also like the Musty Core just as a way to handle his Cryptologist, Ben, Rocks War Monk, Porcelain Legionnaire early stuff. So I think we do want the Musty Core. And maybe we can find one more card to cut for a future side, but it somehow doesn't feel right. This deck is not really a future side deck, and future side isn't even that great against him. I think we can win the late game if we don't mess up. We do need some some ways to interact with consecrated sphinx, which we passed by the way. So um, these late game card, these all these cards aren't that great, but we have snuff out and Olivia. But now that I think about it, he also has Frost Titan. So actually, Wrench might might be might be really nice to get his get his late game cards, his six drops out of his hand. I kind of like that better than the Musty Core. Going to keep in this member, even though it's awkward against his six toughness guys. Or I could actually see myself cutting the Worm Call Engine. I think that's the least important card of the late game cards in this matchup. No, yep, let's try that. I expect him to go first, but he could let me play first. One more one mana hand does have quite a nice uh, collection of spells, though. I think I'm keeping it. We do have a guaranteed drop there, and then Preordain is much better at finding lands than Ponder. We have early early stuff and an upheaval, so I, I don't think I'm mulligan this. We got there with a mulligan to five, so that's that's nice. This is a reason to board in Tectonic Edge, maybe. So now I don't really want to preordain on turn one anyway. Torero West could get could get Shellog out at some point, but that's in the in the distant future, so Hoping that he plays another 3 1 that we can mortar pot. Oh, great. The big question is do we mortar pot right here or do we block first? No, I think we just. We just do that. We can almost upheaval already with the help of Grim Monolith. Although we don't gain much from it. So I think I preordain to find some lands. And that goes on the bottom. Grim Monolith as a potential way to get upheaval into play insanely quickly. Or a remand to keep the board stable. I don't see the reason to upheaval just yet, so let's let's see what he has, and then we can still decide if we want to remand or um, upheaval. We also probably want to um, want to remand just to draw into lands. The seal is kind of bad because it kills every good card we have. So I still have to, I still have to relate the resolve. If he spends his turn casting stuff like this, I think we are very favored to to win the game. So I, I don't see a reason to to stop him from from doing this. Also not going to drop Musty Core or Bane of the Living. The best he could do is probably just play another land, activate the Wildwood. And attack for three. Then I would try to dismember and he can redirect it to Spell Scout. But it looks like we both aren't doing anything. And I feel like that should favor me immensely. Now that's probably one of the worst Sheldock Isles, but I still like Memory Lapse in general.
if he doesn't draw any lands, then I mean, we probably just win. But the pilgrim is a nice start, of course. I think we just dismember his spell guide here. No, I think I think we really want to control this game to the fullest extent, basically. I could copy Mortapod with Metamorph, and if he lets it resolve, I get the germ token to kill the pilgrim. If he doesn't, then I don't, so... No, I think this is the point where we just go for the bane of the living. Because if we draw another land, another swamp, then we can get rid of his board. And we still have the reman. I didn't comment on it yet, but he's obviously also color screwed. Not able to cast any blue spells, so probably sitting there with expensive and or blue cards. Now we are we're getting there. This is what I was expecting him to do, but it's it's kind of sad that this is his best play. I should have left open the black for the dismember. That was that was a mistake. Now he's just going to redirect it to Spellskite, of course. But I think I still dismember. This is like the, the kind of the best turn where I can do it. It also makes my Masticore much better if I can kill his pilgrim immediately. And maybe even get him to seal my Masticore. Well he would probably only do that after I've discarded. No, he can't because then I start regenerating. So yeah, that's I like how this is going. <laughs> this is actually just missing a metal worker of being reminiscent of the old tinker days. I even if I have up here, I think I think this is like very close to a tinker deck here. As expected, he's going to redirect. I mean, it's not really a surprise, so I, I dealt myself two damage there by tapping the swamp. Uh, that's nice. Now I think this is where we just let him do whatever he wants to do and then either remand or or use Bane of the Living. That's a Planeswalker, that's kind of bad. Exile target permanent, your own? That doesn't really do anything, right? So I don't know why he plays this guy right now without anything it could do. Let's just see what, what, what his plan is. I mean, he can, he can exile land that have it untapped. Or this, have it untapped at end of turn. Yeah, right, that's fine. I don't know what his hand is, but these plays aren't looking spectacular. And I believe I'm happy to just take down Venser here. Or at least bring him down to one. And then use the remount again. Yeah, let's just drop Masticore as well. Well, he can he can always kill it, but I, I kind of want the monolith to to stick. So if he if he decides to kill it despite me having mana, 
up, then we just trade the seal and the Masty Core. I don't really want the Masty Core anyway. I don't want to discard my cards. We are almost at a point where I can upheaval Sheldog Isle. And if possible, I can drop the monolith before. Okay, forcing this. This is getting better and better. Forcing the card I just wanted to throw into the seal. I guess it, it makes sense from his point of view. If he wants to protect Venser from Mortapod, then he needs to keep seal up in case I equip. But I'm threatening to kill Venster just by attacking, so I'm not going to not going to equip Mortar Pod. Especially not with him having this. Which is also nice because it kind of hides the fact that I have a remand available available. Okay, this is This is something I, I don't understand. If this is your best play then you should probably be trying to block with it to protect Venser instead of doing stuff like this that doesn't do anything. I mean, now he gets a tap steering Wildwood. Okay. Once again, I could have mystical. I don't see. I don't see a reason to right now. At some point I'm going to have to stop this from killing me. So let's see. I could just stay back from next turn on. Or I can metamorph my Bane of the Living to have a blocker, which he can then kill with the seal, which makes my monolith active for next turn. Yeah, I think they're like that. Although if he has a frost titan, yeah then I just remand. Yeah, as expected. I was kind of expecting him to um, to attack again here, which would would like would kind of be the play that makes the most sense. But I guess if you have a consecrated sphinx, you really want to cast it. So. Mystical Tutor does get some cards here. I, I'm at 21, so I, I, if I draw my card here, the Memory Lapse is active, which is a big deal. So I don't think I need to get anything yet. And sadly, I can't, I can't drop this. So not going to pay to life. Dropping the Monolith. attacking with Bane of the Living and I'm not going to equip because I want to be able to cast the tutor if I want to And this might be the time where I drop the mystical. I have four, five, six, seven, ten mana. And that means if I upheaval, I don't get another mana because I want to have Oh, I have I have more mana than that. I have the Dark Ritual as well. So I can probably drop Mortar Pot and Bane again and have Shallow Guile up. So I don't even know what kind of card I need with the mystical. But I guess that Snuff Out is a nice card to have. Well, I could also... No, I think Snuff Out is the best choice here. Can I can play it without, without paying for it, so... Yeah, I think that should, that should be enough. Now... Bring him down to 5. 
Then I float all my mana. I upheaval. Cast this. Cast this. And then drop an active shell log isle again. Finding a lotus. And that should do it. Upheaval has been good for some time. The quality of my creatures with which to kill him is kind of kind of bad, but what can you do? Kind of hoping that he has something to protect himself, so I can I can snuff out with the help of watery grave. Get the lotus into play to drop the monolith to ramp up back to nine lands on the next turn. But somehow I don't think that's happening. Good games, getting some onslaught packs. No idea what I'm going to do with them, but that's it doing cube drafts for you for mtgoacademy.com. I'm Simon Gautzen. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hope you enjoyed the episode. I love cube draft. I think it's not only skill intensive, but also very diverse and fun. And what more can you ask for? See you next time.